Okay. So I'm going to start with the same photo that Winter did. Um, I've already done the repairs because she showed you how to do that. One thing I'd like to show you is go to Image Adjustment Levels. I usually use this, put this slider about right there at the beginning of that where it starts going up and then the last slider I pull it back to where it, just as it goes down. I seem to think that's a pleasing result on the photo. Okay, um, for coloring, I usually hand color everything. Um, down here you have a button that you can create a new layer. You just click that. And here we'll change that layer to soft light. For our color, I normally keep a skin palette color open in another window. And I just use the color picker to choose a tone out of here. I, um, this one looks good. And I go back to my photo. And I'm going to zoom in here on the navigator so that I can see. Um, whoops need to be on the brush and my brush size bring it up a little bit just so it's faster to color in I usually overlap the hair just slightly um, normally go completely over the eyebrows the only time I wouldn't do that is maybe if uh, the person was blonde I may not go over the eyebrows I do have a tendency to color pretty sloppy and out of the lines and then I go back and clean it up with the brush and I just I just developed the habit of doing it that way so I got all of her skin colored in and I can see I went into her eyes too far get my eraser turn that size down a little bit erase where I went too far. And the teeth, we don't want them to be flesh colored. And the hair, I may have gone a little too far into the hair. Here and there. But we clean this up as we go along. Every color that you use should be on its own separate layer. Um, so now I'm going to add some shading to her face. Let's open a new layer, change that to soft light. Get my brush back, and I typically choose somewhere in the neighborhood of the original flesh color, so I just make it more brown. And I usually go around the edges. And you can kind of see here where it's already shadowed. I'm just emphasizing that. Along the side of the nose, under the nose, under the bottom lip, around the edges of the face. You can see the light is coming in this direction. Her chin is causing a shadow on her neck. This whole side of her face is darker. Now this is a little bit too dark. So this is where the opacity. Turn that down. Oops, that might be a little too much. Turn that down a little bit and that's about 65%. Now I want to add some blush. Again, a new layer change it to soft light and I keep these swatches open here and I, I usually just use the pure red I'm gonna zoom in a little bit I want a big soft brush and just color the apples of her cheeks and again I went into her eye too far soften that a little bit
and then we're going to turn the opacity down and I turn it down way down um, that's about 11 percent um, if we need more color we could turn it back up but I kind of like it right there alright lips a new layer soft light I still use that same pure red I'll turn this down now I'm not putting lipstick on her um, but I always use the red, uh, men and women both. And I'm trying to get it on her gums a little bit where they're showing. And of course I color out of the lines. So I'm going to erase a little bit of it. And I'm going to turn the opacity down. I'm going to turn it down not as much as I turned down the blush, but and make her lips just a little pink 34 percent it looks like I need to fill in a little bit I erase too much I like to zoom out to 100 percent just so I can see how it's looking okay uh, um, let's do her eyes new layer change it to soft light and um, I think she has green eyes. So I'm going to choose a dark green. My brush. I'm just going to go in and color these. Uh, I color the entire eye in. I don't worry about the pupil. Um, sometimes I worry about the pupil, but normally I'll go back and have a new layer. Change it to soft light. And here's a little trick. If you click on these boxes right here, it'll automatically go back to your black and white with black on top. And I'm going to add her pupil back in. And then I'm going to do a new layer. Soft light. Change to white. Oops. That's because I scrolled my wheel. It changed my um, whatever that is, it changed it from soft light. I'm going to turn my brush down a little smaller. I'm going to hit those highlights with the pure white just to bring those back. And I think I'm going to highlight uh, her teeth just a little bit, and that might be too bright. Zoom back down. And her teeth might be a little bit too bright, so I'm going to take a eraser and I'm going to turn the opacity of the eraser down to about 34 percent there and just soften that white that I added. I don't want to totally erase it. Put that back up on a hundred because I always forget. Okay. Now let's do her hair. Do a new layer. Soft light. And let's look at our swatches here. Um, let's just make her a dark brown. I'm going to use this cool brown. My brush size back up bigger. If you have a scroll wheel on your mouse, once you choose this little slider here, you can actually move your scroll wheel to change the size of your mouse. Um, change the size of your brush, I mean. I'm just going to go over her hair. And I do overlap the flesh just a little. To kind of blend it in together. And I'm going to go back with the eraser. Went over a little too far there. Okay. New layer. Soft light. Uh, let's make her sort of a pinkish red, I think. Let's just do this. And again, I'm really sloppy. I just paint over everything. 
I don't know why I do that. I just do. And then we go back and refine those edges. Switch back to the brush and a little closer there. No. All right. That's quite pink, so I'm going to turn the opacity down. I'm still not sure if I like that color, so I can go to Image, Adjustments, whoops, Hue and Saturation, and I can change the color of her shirt. I'll put on Color Eyes. I can change the color of her shirt. Oh, I don't like any of those colors. Let's see, it's a pretty color. I'll keep it there. So I have green eyes, blue shirt. Now for a background, I don't want it to be the same color as her shirt or as her skin, but I kind of want it to be vintage looking. I choose this uh, warmer orangey brown here. Let's see how it looks. It's kind of the same color as her skin. I'm not sure about that one. Color this in real sloppy. Take my eraser. That's not too bad. Turn it down a little bit. I definitely want it to be in the background. Okay, at this point, I may decide that I'm done. Now, obviously, I can add more. Um, I should probably take that back. I'm not done. Let's work on her eyes just a little bit more. We'll go a new layer, soft light, my brush. I need a really small brush. For this, um, eyeballs are round, and so here you see the black. I usually use this bright blue to color in the shadows because the, it's a round ball in her head. Her lids cause a shadow around the edges. I don't want those shadows to be gray. I want them to be kind of a bluish color. So color them in and then turn that opacity way down. That's 10%. I kind of like it there. New layer. Change to soft light. Now for her waterline and tear ducts, I use a bright pink. If you look in the mirror and look at your tear ducts and your waterline, they are not the same color as your face, your eyelid. They're a pinkish color, men and women. 
and it is just a really fine line and it's kind of hard to get sometimes it's a little hard to color it in but I'm used to coloring too big and then erasing to where I need it All right and then we turn that way down to, it's almost invisible but it's just slightly pinker than her face and in this particular photo that doesn't make a lot of difference but it would make a difference on some I'm going to do a new layer and change it to soft light I'm just going to try this and see if it's needed it, um, the whites of her eyes are a little bit maybe a little bit too dark so right along her iris I'm going to add a little white I'm going to zoom out and that may be a little too white so I'm going to turn the opacity down and I think I like that Okay. at this point you would probably want to save this um, as a PSD file save as and you want to save as PSD Photoshop file I'm not going to because I already have this and I don't want another one um, after you do that then this particular photo has a lot of texture in it that is remnants from the actual photograph the paper that was used um, so I'm going to flatten my image and that puts everything on one layer and I have um, what they call the Orton effect um, so we go layer duplicate layer and you can name the layer here if you want to. Um, I'm not going to, but you can. And then I'm going to change that layer to screen. And this lightens the photo. Then I am going to duplicate the layer again. I'm going to run a filter on this one. Um, blur, Gaussian blur. I'm going to focus on her face here and I'm going to make this where it's just slightly blurred and that kind of gets rid of that bumpy texture from the photo paper and I'm going to change this layer to darken oh and it looks like I made it a little too fuzzy so here's your history tab is your friend I'm going to go back to the state before I did the blur and I'm going to do that blur again and this time I'm going to turn that down let's try about a 1 or a 0.8 yeah let's try a 0.8 and then I'm going to change this to darken yeah that's pretty good you can also try multiply but sometimes that makes it way too dark I'm going to go back to darken. Uh, then we're going to merge the visible layers again. Crop it. And I'm going to crop everything out. and I kind of missed a little bit down here but I'm not going to worry about that too much now I do kind of sometimes like that little white border so if I want to put that back whoops okay put it back pink um, I'll do that Let's switch this to, to black and white <laughs> all right now that puts the white border in there Yeah, I'm just eyeballing it. If I was doing this professionally, I would be more precise. Um, that puts that white border back on there and makes it look like a photograph again. 
I hope this was helpful and please let me know if you have any questions. And thank you for watching.